Hi everyone, it's Connor here from Durham Hearing Specialists. I hope you're doing well and welcome to another video. We've got a very interesting case here. Now, if you're squeamish, look away, go to another video because what you're gonna see here is pus and dead skin filling the ear canal. And this patient has had uh, infections many, many times um, over the years, in this ear particularly. So I've referred them to an ear, an ear nose and throat consultant for this particular reason. Um, but what we're going to do is clean the ear as effectively as possible. Um, and we do manage to get down to the eardrum, but the eardrum looks quite abnormal. It looks thickened. Um, at least I think it looks, I think, I think that's what's wrong with it. Um, and it's thickened probably due to the fact that it's had trauma so many times repeatedly. Um, so you can see these large sort of globules of, of dead skin that we're removing, uh, which is fairly common with the Titus externa. So technically this is acute otitis externa, which is an infection of the outer ear. And if you're interested in, in learning a bit about the, the relationship between dead skin shedding and infection, then I'll link uh, another video in the description box below, which is quite good. It's the acute diffuse desquamation video. Um, now, unfortunately, we can't, we're not able to get all of this pus because the ear canal is very, very sensitive. And you'll see in just a moment, um, I do a quick edit and that's where the patient nearly jumped out of their chair because I applied just a bit too much pressure um, to the eardrum. Um, so what we see here is we, as we sort of creep into the canal very slowly, right down the end, we have this sort of pus dead skin mess. And right around here, I think the eardrum is on the other side, directly on the other side of this debris. And just going in here very slowly, just kissing the surface of that debris. And you can see I'm just hoovering away very, very slowly, but we have to be very cautious because again, if we apply just a little bit too much pressure, it's gonna, be, it's gonna hurt, basically. Um, but we are making a good amount of progress and we can start to see perhaps the, the suggestion of an eardrum back there. But again, it does look quite abnormal. Um, and you might be wondering at this point, what is pus? and why is it there? And pus is, okay, so there was, there was the bit that I had to cut because the patient jumped quite significantly. So, that, so I know for a fact now that the eardrum is there and obviously it's very well innovated. Um, pus is, uh, I could talk about this kind of thing all day, um, but it is very interesting. Um, so if you were to look at it under a microscope, you would see lots of dead white blood, uh, white blood cells. So they're a particular type of white blood cell, primarily called neutrophils. So when you have an infection, um, the, the process of inflammation is such that, that these white blood cells called neutrophils are really attracted to that area of, of damage, of, that, of infection. Uh, so you can think of them as the sort of the frontline infantry of your immune system and they die in great quantity when they're fighting the bacteria. So pus is, is a mixture of neutrophils, bacteria. So there's the eardrum right there. You can see it looks how it looks sort of indistinct, a little bit ambiguous, and there still is pus around the area. Um, obscuring our view, but uh, it doesn't look quite quite normal. So uh, yeah, dead dead neutrophils, dead bacteria, and then there's serum in there as well. And you can think of serum as the sort of watery part of blood. So if you have a pint of blood and you take the red blood cells away, you have plasma. And if you take away proteins from the plasma, so fibrogens, which help clot your, your blood, um, then you have a pint of serum. So we can see here, I'm, I'm just sort of creeping in with the suction probe, but I really don't want to touch anything at this point because we're so deep in the air, and obviously the patient is a bit jittery, a bit jumpy. Um, but this is a fairly good outcome. So what we've achieved here is, first of all, we've restored the patient's hearing to some degree. So she felt much, much better after this procedure, and she felt as though the, uh, the hearing was, was improved. Um, but also this gives the medicine an opportunity to have more direct contact with the infected tissue. So immediately after this uh, procedure, she was prescribed some otomized by her GP. And then of course, she'll be followed up later on in due course by an ear, nose and throat consultant. So just a quick video today, but I thought it was very interesting. Um, and you know, if I get another infection case through, um, then I'll talk more in detail um, about the inflammatory response and um, all the sort of weird chemicals that, that are released by um, white blood cells when a, a bacteria is discovered. But uh, there we go. I hope you found that one entertaining. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you for leaving all the comments. If you have any questions, please leave them down below in the comment section and I will try my best to answer them. Thank you for subscribing and I will see you on the next one.